fucking fact for all you aspiring writers out there. Having gay characters in your story doesn't mean shit if they suck ass. Now, I don't mean suck ass in the sex way. I mean suck ass in the character way. If they suck ass in the sex way, that's fine. They're gay. They do that. Unless they're ace, they're only gay in the romantic sense. But I'm not even open that fucking can of worms right now. Do you know... You guys want to know what I just watched? You guys want to know what I just experienced? What I just had to observe in class? I had to watch the first episode of Will and Grace. Now, in the week... Or, you know, a couple of classes leading up to this. I just realized I was holding the camera in the wrong way. In the week leading up to this little, um, exhibition, we were told in class that this was like the paragon of introducing the queers to the public in television. It's been given, like, awards and, like, propped up by writers and people as being this absolute pinnacle of queer representation in a way that not only allowed America to accept the gays on television, but to run with them. So that we get our Mitchell and Camerons. So that we get our fucking other, say, a lesbian pairing. I haven't seen any American shows with lesbian pairings on them. You know why? Because they don't fucking exist. Or at least they don't... You know, I'm not, I've never heard one that's worth my time. Anyway. Point is, this was supposed to be great. And I thought I was going into our screening today like, oh, you know, we, I might actually enjoy myself here. We might actually have a, a grand old time here at, at Arizona State University. No. No. You don't. No, no, no. I don't care what year it is. It's not, I think, what, 1998 when this show released? So 19 years ago. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. You know why? Because you can't... It's, it's not a surprise to me that America accepted the queer on TV after this. You know why? Because the queer we got in that first episode was the most blatant stereotype of a gay person I've ever fucking seen. They hit every single base like are you kidding me every single base every si there there was no stone left fucking unturned you know why because it's dumb let me let me let me list the ways let me count the ways that they fucked this up first off and I'm not going in order of appearance because I don't remember the order of appearance that well. But the one that sticks out in my mind first off is that he's feminine. He's girly. He, go, he knows all the girls want. He talks with the gay inflection in his voice. He does. He wears the sweater around his neck. He is fashionable. He knows bandanas are in. And if you don't know that, you're an idiot. And, you know, this is not just to say that, you know, gay boys can't be effeminate, because that exists, that's fine, that's just how you are, but that's what the stereotype is, and you know what? You know what, Chelsea? I'm just so fucking sick and tired of always seeing it, because you know where else we see it, and everyone's favorite TV show, Modern Fucking Family, like I mentioned Mitchell and Cameron earlier, Mitchell's the same fucking character, he's the same way, you know, effeminate, you know, Cameron too, he's also really effeminate sometimes, you know, cause he's a theater gay, you know, prancing around with all these huh and huh motions and just, ugh, so effeminate, so curly, because gay men can't be masculine, oh no. Loving a man is something reserved for somebody only who has feminine qualities. No! Anyone can fucking love a man if they want to. I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't care what differentiation, you know, where you find yourself on the gender sexuality spectrum. I don't give a fuck. You can love a man if you want. That's just how you roll. That's fine. Second thing. He's in the cooking. This could use a smidge more gravy. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Girly habits. 
on top of, you know, the, the heteronormative gender roles of society, women are supposed to stay in the kitchen. That's what they say. Women are supposed to stay in the fucking kitchen because they're the homebodies. They're supposed to stay and protect the home, have it ready for the husband, and that's what one or both of the gay dudes in the relationship has to do. They have to be the home giver. They have to be the person who slaves away, who knows that the potato chips could use just a smidge more gravy because they're too dry. That's just how it is. That's how it is in American media. I don't know how it is in other places in the world, but that's generally what it is in American media. Because American media is fucking dumb. Because gay representation in America is fucking dumb. Uh, okay, what's the next thing? Ah, he's promiscuous. Gotta have the promiscuous gay. Gays just can't be nailed down to one person. Gays just can't have normal love lives like other people, you know? It's perfectly fine if a straight person is promiscuous sometimes, you know? That's life. That's hormones, you know? You know, if you just, if you get down and dirty, you know, you jump on the bed with your partner and you just have a grand old time. It doesn't matter if you're straight, you know? In fact, sometimes it's encouraged, it's encouraged in colleges sometimes that you get like these slutty easy girls and it's encouraged because they're easy you can have sex with them anytime because men need sex men have to have sex if men don't have sex if they're not going back and forth and oh 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 holy shit holy shit then they're not men they're not men you're not a man if you're a virgin you're not a man if you haven't done these things, you're not a man if you're not sex experienced. That's just hit every single stereotype. Every single one. He's also small. You know, he's not large. He's not well bit. He, your bills, he's fit. But you know, he's not a real, he's not a rap scallion. He's not like the type of guy that you think, you know, could just, you know, really rough him up. You have a puncher's chance against one of these burly, strong, manly men. And it's just enough already. Like, can we just be done? Can we, like, I don't care. I don't care if this is what normalized. It didn't normalize shit. You know how many gay people are on television right now? Oh, here's another thing. He's white. He's white. Because God forbid not only, God forbid us not only putting a person of color in a leading role, but God forbid us making that person gay. Holy shit. He's gay. He's white. He's upper class. He's cis. He checks every box of what America expects from a male character, except for the fact that he's gay. And he is gay in the most stereotyped way possible. I don't give a shit if it's 1998. I don't give a shit if it's 2098. I don't care what year it is, how many gays have been on television before then, and how many gays come on television after. Bad representation is bad representation. Stereotyping is stereotyping. Caricatures are caricatures, and they are bad no matter when. No matter what, the first black people on television were horrible, horrible stereotypes. And I mean, you had Oscar Michaud in early film, and he was doing great fucking work trying to reclaim black cinema from fucking, what's his name, the guy who did Birth of a Nation, D.W. Griffith. You know, that was great, because he was trying to do his best with what he had. But you know what? Sticking a white gay on television in 1998 and people calling it revolutionary? That's liberal bullshit. That's, that, you know, the, you know, the political spectrum here. That's, you know, like right here. That's, that's right, you know, barely to the left, socially and economically, just because you like the gays, you like the queers. That is bullshit. All of this is bullshit. And I am sick and tired, especially now in retrospect, of people propping shows like this, like Yuri on fucking ice, and all the other stupid caricatured, Bad fucking rec re the, the, the representation of my fucking sexuality on the television. 
that is all. 